Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Noel. I'm with Caseware Analytics and today I'm here to give an overview of Caseware IDEA. Caseware IDEA is a computer assisted audit tool or a CAT that will help you gain insight and gather information from your data. To begin with, I will start by going over some of the user interface elements and explain what each one does. To open a file, click on the file name in the File Explorer. This will open up the file in the database window. As you can see, if you select a cell, you cannot change the values within it. This ensures data integrity and mitigates the risk of accidental data deletion. The File Explorer allows you to see more information regarding the database files. This includes the record number, size, modified date, and creation date, as well as the parent-child relationship between databases. At the bottom of the File Explorer window, there is the Library tab, which shows you other project-related files. These files are found in the current project folder, as well as the local library folder. At the very bottom of the Idea window, there are flyout windows, which come up when running a task or performing a search. All of these windows are modular, which means you can drag them around your screen or drop them into IDEA where you wish, using the placement icons. Importing a text file is easy using the Import Assistant. Here is an example of importing a CSV file. We'll start by selecting the file we wish to import and navigate through the dialogs to properly define our record definition. This menu allows you to select the type of text file you wish to import. Since the first row contains field names, we'll make sure to select that option. In the Field Details dialog, we'll ensure the fields are the correct name and type. Once we've defined the record definition, we can finish the import to bring this table into IDEA. IDEA has a number of analyses that can be performed on your data. For example, let's say I wish to see a summarization of my sales reps totals. I can easily do so using the summarization function. Once I've selected my summarization options and selected OK, IDEA creates a new file containing the sum info. As you can see, the new database is shown in the file explorer below the parent database signifying their relationship. Any blue hyperlinks found in IDEA will open up the related items and allow you to save those items into their own database. You can create different views of your data using the pivot table option, allowing you to quickly summarize and analyze large amounts of data. To create a pivot table, you simply select the fields you wish to use and drag them onto the pivot table canvas. Once a pivot table has been created, you can save it as an IDEA database and reuse it as need be. Another great feature in IDEA is the ability to relate the databases to one another using the join function. Let's say I would like to have a table with transactions and sales rep names. I would first find my table with sales rep names to make sure it's correct. Here they are, looks good. And starting from my primary table, I can select the join function from the relate group. From the join dialog, I'll select the sales rep table and the key field to join on. Let's only bring in the fields we need. For more information regarding join types, the help menu has explanations of the different join options as well as diagrams and examples. Here is our join table. One neat thing I can do in IDEA is move the columns around in the table so I can view the data better. Perhaps at this point, 
I would like to see totals and statistics regarding this data. For that, I will need to create field statistics from the properties menu. From here, I can get an overall sense of my data. I can see minimums, maximums, averages, and totals for my numeric fields. If I click on any of the blue hyperlinks, IDEA will bring up the related records, which I can then save. We can also see date and time statistics. This shows me my earliest and latest date and transactions categorized by period. Let's say I know this business doesn't work on Sundays. So why are there transactions taking place on that day? Hmm. If I simply want to see a control total on a field, I can select it from my properties box. Another important feature in Caseware IDEA is found in the database history. The history contains information on how this table was imported and the steps to how this database was created. Expanding the nodes in the history provides you with information on the input file, the number of records, as well as the idea script code that can be used to automate this database creation. You can choose what you wish to view in the history by choosing the filter content dialog. The content will still be there, you just won't see it. I can now export the history to a text, Word, or PDF document. This will help prove my investigation later on if need be. Let's go back to the data. At this point, let's say I want to see only certain records in my database. I can easily filter values by right-clicking on one of the values and selecting Display All Records Containing. This will prompt me with a dialog defining the filter criteria. For this, I will stick with the defaults. Once the criteria has been applied, you'll notice the number of records in the bottom status bar changes to a fraction, denoting the number of records shown. I can now adjust my criteria to show me different records using the Equation Editor. We'll discuss the Equation Editor later on in this overview. I can also piggyback on my last filter and create complicated criteria options easily by right-clicking on a different value and doing the same thing. Note the criteria being created in the bottom of the dialog. In this manner, you can pinpoint specific records of interest easily and quickly. If I wish to go back to all the data, I simply need to right-click criteria and select clear. There is a history of criteria stored in the right-click menu. Now let's have some fun. We can create a stratification result to better understand our population in this transaction table. Here I will choose my field to stratify and total on and create my desired strata bands. This presents a result that lists both the bands and the exceptions. Again, you can click on the blue hyperlink to view the records. Let's try something else now. Let's say I have a database where I would like to isolate duplicate customer names. In some instances, I can get this information from running the duplicate detection analysis but the names must be exactly the same. In order to tackle this, we'll create a new virtual field and clean it of any spaces, accents, and lowercase characters. We'll then run the duplicate key detection task on that cleaned field. We'll start with appending a new field into the database. From this dialog, we'll choose our field parameters and open the equation editor again to create a new field. The Equation Editor has a wealth of built-in add functions that can assist you in cleaning and transforming your data. When used in conjunction with your field values, 
it becomes a powerful tool to manipulate and verify your data. As we can see, the virtual field shows up as a different color than a native field types. From here, we can run our duplicate key analysis using the clean company virtual field as the key. Some of the results look like duplicates and some of them don't. Notice how the last two records have both a space difference and a capitalization difference. I can determine that the first two records are duplicates based on the person's name and country being the same. This being the case, I'll create an extraction using just these records. The direct extraction task allows me to output a file based on criteria that I specify. I can create the criteria directly in the task or by the criteria that is already applied to the database. You can also specify which fields you want in the resulting database. Once you're done with your project, you can archive your project into a single file. Obviously, you cannot archive the project you are currently in, so make sure you are on a different project before running this task. For this exercise, I will archive my Ed's Burger Palace project. First, select the project then select the destination folder. Now if I enter the Edsberger Palace project and delete or move files, I can restore my archive. We're going to do just that. To easily copy an IDEA database, right-click it in the File Explorer and select the Copy To option. You can also move a database in the same manner. To delete one or more databases, Select the databases and use the Delete option in the right-click menu. Clearly, I've made a mess of this project. Let's delete the project and restore it from the archive. We'll select the source file, the one we backed up earlier, and choose whether this is to be restored as a managed project or as an external one. Finally, I'd like to mention the Refresh File Explorer button in the File Explorer toolbar. I've copied a new file into my project from another, but it does not show up yet. To fix this, click on the Refresh File Explorer button and it will show up immediately.